looking fine. So let me go ahead and turn it over to Ben the Baptist and allow him to introduce himself. So Ben, welcome to the Skylar Fiction Show. Tell me a little bit about yourself, maybe a little bit about your channel. Well, my name is Benjamin Knight and I run the Ben the Baptist YouTube channel. I've been doing it for over a year now, I believe. I honestly, I don't remember. And obviously I believe the Bible. Um, I have this shirt on right here. Hope you all like it. King James Bible right there. And I think I should say on the onset that I am one of those KJV onlyists. Sure. Okay. I believe the modern Bible versions are corrupt. I believe the modern Bible versions uh, have been modified and change essential doctrine, especially on salvation. Um, Hello, Jeff Dollar here once again. Uh, today I'd like to critique a video which is actually on an atheist channel, Skylar Fiction, uh, which is uh, somewhat of an older video. I think it was back about a year or so where he had a guest on there by the name of Ben the Baptist. Now, if you're familiar with the new IFB, Ben the Baptist is somewhat of, of a, a new IFB celebrity with his own channel. I believe he preaches in some, some of their churches. He interviews the preachers. So he has a, uh, his own channel, but he decided to go on uh, for whatever reason uh, Skylar Fiction's uh, atheist atheistic channel, and I believe he really uh, made uh, uh, quite a a fool out of himself. Unfortunately, I believe that the testimony of Christ was harmed in that uh, he said certain things and re tried to represent certain doctrines which uh, really don't represent Christianity. So I wanted to take this uh, portions of that and critique that. Uh, as uh, as to why what should have been said, what uh, the problems are with some of his answers, uh, some of the the, uh, the ways that he had had spoken to uh, Skyler. Uh, one thing to, to consider is that uh, first of all, that the men of the old and new IFB, specifically the Hiles branch of that uh, movement, are by no means qualified uh, to defend the faith publicly. You know, they are, their movement is designed uh, more so to exist within their own bubble. You know, they, they cannot uh, uh, go outside of their bubble and debate uh, in a coherent way. When they do, it usually turns out to be uh, something that, that is rather disastrous for them. Uh, Stephen Anderson has even said that it is almost sinful, if he hasn't said it is sinful, to debate. Because he takes that word, the King, old King James word, debate, which I believe has to do with a uh, fighting in quarrelsome manner, uh, and he applies that to a, a civil debate, a scholar, scholarly debate, uh, which has been going on for centuries that scholars have done between each other to come to certain conclusions within churches or institutions. He says that's sinful. Well, uh, I think the purpose of, of claiming that's sinful is so you don't have to do it. You know, you can get up behind the pulpit and you just pronounce certain things as true and never having to defend them. As long as you stay within your bubble, you're okay. But if you go outside the bubble, that's when you have problems. You know, I, I remember about a year or so ago, uh, somebody from the new IFB decided that they wanted to talk to James White about a certain issues. And, and again, it, it turned out to be a disaster for them. And, uh, and it was here with this particular issue with Ben the Baptist and Schuyler Fiction. Uh, these men, first of all, of this particular group, do not really represent the faith to begin with. There are serious doctrinal errors, uh, which places them outside of the Christian faith. Uh, the doc, For example, they deny the doctrine of original sin. Uh, that puts them in a category of Pelagianism, which has always been considered outside the realm of historic Orthodox Christianity. Uh, their doctrine of repentance, which we've covered many times before, places them outside of Christianity. Uh, the reprobate doctrine which they teach, uh, where they are permitted to be rude to certain uh, sinners, certain types of sinners are excluded from the grace of God, so therefore they can be rude. You'll see that exhibited in this video. Uh, the King James only position which they take, where you can actually only be saved if the King James version is used. Uh, they, they are untrained and unqualified men. Uh, they should not actually even be behind the pulpit. If they were in a biblical church, such as, as our church, uh, they would not even be able to be members, let alone preachers. You know, so uh, 
when we're looking at this, we need to keep that in mind. They are not capable of surviving any debate outside of their own little scope of influence. So with that in mind, uh, we, uh, we have here uh, with a situation where Ben the Baptist decided to take on Schuyler fiction. Now, Schuyler, uh, at least I have contacted him and had some uh, correspondence back and forth through email. Uh, he seems to be a polite and reasonable person. Of course, I would be quite on the opposite side of his position. Uh, uh, but when you look at what he produces, it's, it's very anti-Christian. And uh, he knows what he's talking about. You know, so if you're going to debate somebody like uh, Schuyler Fiction, you better have all your ducks in a row theologically. And, of course, anybody in the new IFB is not capable of that. Uh, Schuyler has a, a Christian background. He understands the basics of Christianity. He seems to be well-read. He's well-prepared. And only a seasoned, well-prepared Christian uh, should get on his program and answer questions and, and have discussions uh, with, with a person like Schuyler Fiction. And that's one of the problems there, what happened there. Ben the Baptist, however, uh, rushed in where angels feared to tread. Uh, he actually loads up Schuyler's artillery, hands Schuyler the ammunition, and uh, Schuyler just blows him out of the water. You know, that His answers are so incoherent and foolish that it did it, it really uh, gave a bad testimony to Christianity. So uh, this video is somewhat lengthy. I believe it's well over an hour long. Uh, we'll pull out a few highlights here and there and make a few comments, uh, discuss a few things. Uh, and once again, uh, these videos that I make are usually done on the fly. Uh, I have to do things between stuff at work or at home or early in the morning or late at night. Uh, I may be dressed differently in different sections of, of these, this particular video. Uh, so I just keep that in mind. I appreciate your patience with that. Uh, so let's just, uh, we'll start here at the beginning and we'll take it from there. And obviously I believe the Bible. Um, I have this shirt on right here. Hope you all like it. King James Bible right there. And I think I should say on the onset that I am one of those KJV onlyists. Sure. Okay. I believe the modern Bible versions are corrupt. I believe the modern Bible versions uh, have been modified and change essential doctrine, especially on salvation. Uh, Immediately, Ben starts out with the King James issue, uh, flaunting the King James issue, uh, which I think is like putting a target on, on, the, on your back saying, go ahead and shoot me. Uh, the King James only issue is not one that you can defend even within the Christian church. Now, I've got several videos on that. I won't go into detail here, uh, but I think it's a very foolish thing to flaunt that particular issue in front of atheists. Atheists hate the Bible. Uh, it doesn't matter what version it is. We can discuss the uh, quality of each version or the problems with each version among Christians. Uh, but to bring that up, uh, I think it's just showing that you hold an anti-intellectual position that an atheist can easily tear apart. Let's move on. So let's say you had a father and he had uh, some very strict rules. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, uh, you can't be a homo. You can't uh, uh, be a serial fornicator. You can't do a well, bunch of Why do you other... use the word homo instead of just saying gay? Can I ask you that? Absolutely. And you know what? We could turn it over to you after this if you'd like. No, no, no. But just, um, to, I'm just, just real quick, quick why, why you just couldn't use a word like gay or just use the word homosexual? <laughs> Here's why. Because gay means happy, according to the Bible. The Bible talks about gay clothing. Sure. And so I feel it wouldn't be accurate to describe a sodomite with that word. Well, homosexual. Prefer... How about homosexual? The scientific term. Well, I just prefer to be as mean as possible. Are, are you are you serious? Really? That's is that really what you mean? You just want to be mean to gay people? Right. Yeah. Homo is mean, and so so I just goal, so your intent is to be mean to people. Yes. Okay. Is, that's what you're. When I get to this part of the video, I have to say that it actually makes me cringe. Uh, when we're presenting the Lord Jesus Christ to the world, the world is going to view Christ as it views us. Uh, I don't believe that the new IFB represents Christianity at all, but it does pretend to, to, uh, to do that. So the world 
looks at that and says, well, this is what, is this what Christianity is to be? And we'll maybe get a little deeper into this little conversation. But from this point, uh, this conversation went, went downhill, uh, where you have uh, Ben deciding that it is okay to insult others. And it's okay to be mean to others. That's what Christianity is. Well, let's take a look at what some of the scriptures say. Romans chapter 12. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. So to go out and to provoke a confrontation by calling somebody a name by being mean to somebody because you determine that type of a sinner is not worthy of respect that's not christianity uh, you can call it what you will but it's not christianity i'm looking over to ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 be angry and do not sin do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil let him who stole still no longer but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who is in who has need let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers then it goes on to say the next verse and do not grieve the holy spirit uh, so, is this kind of behavior Christian? Not according to the Bible. Now, they can conjure up whatever ideas they want as to how they're to behave before the world. But uh, uh, that's not the way to do it. And finally, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verses 6 through 7. <clears throat> This is talking about the qualifications of a novice. I'm sorry, of a, of a bishop. He's not to be, first of all, a novice, verse 6. Uh, he's not a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into the reproach and the snare of the devil. So here we have a, uh, a, a situation where the world is now going to view the church as being full of mean people. That's what they wanted. This is what the the enemy wants to present to the world. These people, uh, they say that they're loving, that they're kind, that they're gracious, but they're not. They're just full of meanness, uh, just like anybody else. So uh, this this kind of behavior is well outside the realm of Christianity. Now, this is, is not the real problem uh, with the new IFB. The real problem is doctrinal. The real problem is they don't understand the new birth. They don't understand having a new heart. And that new heart then gives us grace in dealing with sinners. You know, it's, there's always, I remember in fundamentalism, there was always this idea you have the us and the them. Us are the Christians and them are the sinners. And you looked at people who behaved in uh, ill ways, you know, the homosexuality or, or these other things those who went out and did did drugs or those who were fornicators or those who did this were always looked down on but the truth of the matter is that we are all children of wrath if it's not for the grace of god so we ought to be we ought to look at sin with reversion or aversion we ought to look at sin with disgust because now that we are a new creature well we have been been given the holy spirit and there is going to be a nature of holiness imparted to us so that these things as the Lord Jesus Christ felt as he's walking through this sinful earth a part of his suffering was having to deal with sin all the time we're going to have to deal with that uh, but we're not going to have we're not going to to look down upon sinners we were there you know the the, the I knew I've doesn't want to admit this but first Corinthians chapter 6 says regarding homosexuality uh, and such were some of you that some within the church 
at one time were homosexuals. Now they're going to, to dismiss that verse and try to twist their way around it. But that's that's just a matter of fact. We're not we're not to be mean to sinners. This is the worst case of Phariseeism uh, that I think I've I've seen, and it's just blatant. Uh, so what 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 uh, my response to that is? I think that Ben, you need to apologize, and you need to repent, and uh, uh, maybe the Lord will direct you in that will lead you in that direction. Uh, we can only hope so. Let's move on. That's what your religion teaches you? Yeah, actually, the Bible does say uh, that there are certain people we should hate. Uh, there are some people we should love, you know? Well, um, hating and being I, mean to somebody aren't necessarily the same thing. You can hate somebody in your heart and still not be mean to them. Well, the Bible actually says, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. So... Uh, you know, there's certain people out there who hate God. And so, you know, the Bible does say that homos or sodomites have been given over to a reprobate mind and that they're haters of God, according to Romans chapter one. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I see no problem with calling them homos. And yes, it is mean, and that's the intention. So your, your intention is... I'd like to close up this section of the video uh, with just a few comments. Uh, we'll come back and maybe make a part two and maybe a part three. There's a lot there. Uh, but um, the, the first of all, it's a shame that Schuyler the Atheist has more common sense and civility than the professing Christian. You know, that even if you do have a, an aversion for certain people, you don't have to express it in meanness. You know, and it's, it, it's uh, I would say it makes me chuckle, but it's so sad. Yeah, that a, a professing Christian has to be scolded by an atheist. Well, the second part is the verse that he quotes uh, from Second Chronicles uh, chapter 19, you know, where it talks about uh, the... Let's just take a look there, if, if you would. It says here, And Jehu, son of Hananiah, Hananiah, the seer, went out to meet him and said to Jehoshaphat, should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore, the wrath of the Lord is upon you. Nevertheless, good things are found in you, and that you have removed the wooden images from the land and have prepared your heart to seek God. What is the context of that particular verse? Is that verse something that's tucked away in the New Testament and those other verses that we read earlier and how Christians to behave? No. The context of that verse is that here you have good King Jehoshaphat, who's basically a good man who desires to seek the Lord, who is sinning by yoking up with Ahab. Ahab was an enemy of God. Ahab was doomed to destruction. Uh, God had determined to destroy Ahab in his wickedness. Ahab, with his wife Jezebel, uh, were persecuting the prophets of God. And uh, Elijah I came to Ahab and, and pronounced doom upon him. And yet here we have another prophet here had to go to Jehoshaphat, who was a good king, and say, why are you helping those who hate, hate the Lord? Uh, so the, the, the context is not the sense that we're permitted to be mean to others. But the context here is that if, there, if you have somebody who is openly working against the kingdom of God, why would you consider yoking up with them and helping them? So this is this is a pattern uh, that you'll find in the new IFB that they'll take some verse, some obscure verse that has nothing to do with a particular context, pull it out and use that as a justification for their behavior, for their doctrine. You know, no, uh, the Bible does not permit us to be calling names of others and to be mean to others simply because uh, we determine them to be to be beyond the grace of God. That's nowhere. In the scriptures. And then I'll say again, in closing this video, <clears throat> is that the only place you find the Lord Jesus Christ using derogatory names is in Matthew 23, uh, where you see him discussing the Pharisees. He's confronting the Pharisees with their hypocrisy. The Pharisees uh, were the religious hypocrites of the day. Now, I would dare say that if the Lord Jesus were here bodily again and confronting evil, 
uh, he'd be like the he would be behaving like he did with the woman at the well, the woman who had the five husbands. He was kind and gentle. He confronted her uh, with her sin. He did not use derogatory terms or the woman that was taken in adultery. You, know, you, you never find the Lord Jesus Christ using derogatory terms towards sinners, but he does towards religious hypocrites. And I don't think you can find a better example of religious hypocrisy than you do here. Now, once again, uh, if, if Ben sees this and you want to have a discussion on this you, and you want to explain yourself, you're most welcome to. But you need to repent of this kind of behavior as well as the rest of the new IFB. This is a blot on the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ in this world. The Lord Jesus Christ never permitted or sanctioned us to go out and call names and to be mean to people because they're sinners. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. Once again, as I, as I mentioned, we'll probably do some more on this video. It's very lengthy. But may the Lord bless you in your search for truth.